Before we get started, I got a couple of disclaimers. One of which is we are in the middle of a heat wave this week. It has been up to 108 degrees for the high. So you're going to hear some fan noise here and there in the background. And I apologize for that, but this is a hot place. But um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, in today's video, I'm using some technology. It's called the Arduino Uno. And what this is, is a little microcontroller. I'll show it over here in the PIP. And uh, this, uh, this can be daunting for some people, uh, only because it's unfamiliar. And that's what I wanted to talk about before we get started. This microcontroller is incredibly easy to use. The way I'm going to apply the Arduino in this project is very simple. It's going to test for motion, and then if it detects motion, it's going to flip a switch. If it detects motion again, it is going to flip the switch again. So, wave your hand over it, it'll turn on. Wave your hand over it, it'll turn off. It's very easy to use. There are dozens of these input sensors of various types. You can test for light, you can test for moisture, you can test for temperature, humidity, motion, distance, and all of these sensors are made to just put, provide one input to the Arduino. At the back end, you can have it turn on a motor, flip a switch, turn on a light. There's all kinds of things. And these are all very simple to use. In fact, I didn't even have to write the program to do this. I'll put a link up in the card above and that will take you to a video here on YouTube that is six minutes long and I copied the code from that video verbatim. I did not change one letter. I know a lot of my viewers are fellow YouTube content creators and I just want to tell you if you can master the technology to put a YouTube video up you can learn to use these Arduino microcontrollers. They're very simple, super cheap, there's so much software out there, you don't even have to write the code yourself. In fact, most of the people I know that use them, they don't know anything about programming either. They just know where to look to find someone else that already did the work for them. And that's the best way to do things anyway, isn't it? So, let's get on with the build. Well friends, I hope the sound of the fans is not interfering too much, but it's 108 degrees here today, and fans are all I have, so they gotta keep running. Anyway, my friend Andy Hansen is a tattoo artist, and a really good one, and he presented me with an interesting dilemma. You know, a tattoo artist, everything he has is sterile, his guns, his needles, his power supply, all his ink, and, uh, and even the, the little ink pots that he dips his tattoo gun into. And <clears throat> he loads all that up into his carry case, and then the last thing to go in is this filthy, grody, foot switch for the tattoo machine. So what he tasked me with was making a motion sensing switch that he can just wave his hand over. It never even gets touched. And so it can be sterilized and be loaded up with the rest of his equipment. Making a motion sensing switch is really pretty easy in today's world. I'm going to use an Arduino Uno microcontroller with a motion sensor and a little transistor to do the actual switching. Uh, there's, there's not a lot to it. All you do is tell the Arduino to look at the motion sensor, and if the motion sensor sends a signal, flip a switch. And that is very straightforward, easy programming. I think the code for it is only maybe 30 lines of code to do the whole job. So the electronics is the easy part. That's been on my bench set up and working for a week or two. The hard part is the enclosure. I want it to be cool. Ironic, I'd be saying that on this 108 degree day. But uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I've got this uh, wine box from France, some mystery white wood, I don't know what it is, but it's pretty solid and it's, uh, there's no knots in it. So I'll just use this and what I'm going to make is a pyramid. So I've chosen five by five inches as the size of my base and I also want it five inches tall. So we need to figure out how long to make the, the sides for it to be five inches tall. And there's actually a way to derive this ma mathematically, but what I'm going to do is just kind of measure it. I've got my square in the middle <clears throat> and I'm just going to lean this in and it left a mark. Using the hold it in place and give it your best guess technique, I come up with five and seven eighths inches. 
So now I'm just going to cut triangles out of these boards that are that dimension. And if you're wondering why I'm not just using these ends because they're square, they also have staple holes in them that I can avoid by using them as the point. Now we'll take these over to the bandsaw and cut them out. Now you may notice that uh, I'm staying outside the lines on this. And when I get over here to the oscillating belt sander, what I will do is sand up to the line and that will give me a more precise fit. Well that fit is pretty good. There's a little bit of gap, but I think it'll work. So I have my pyramid and my base and they're fitting together pretty good. And if you're wondering how I calculated these angles for the uh, bevels, uh, it was really just trial and error. There are a lot of computations that are really complicated and uh, probably wouldn't have yielded an accurate result anyway, so I just did it by eye. Now to glue up the top. Eleven AM, eighty-eight degrees. All right, so it's the next day, and uh, this glued up pretty nice. Uh, it, it's got some imperfections, but it'll sand out nicely, and it'll 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 be good. One thing I need to do is install this. This is the motion sensor. You wave your hand over it. I want it to stick straight out the top of the pyramid. So I'm going to have to flatten this off and bore a hole through it to accept this uh, sensor. So the next step is going to be to put some holes in here so we can get power in and get the signal out. Now the signal is going to come out through this guitar cord because that is the same plug that goes into the uh, tattoo machine power supply. For the cord all I need is a quarter inch hole. But for the Arduino Uno I'm going to need to cut some slots so the pyramid body can slide down over. This is going to be where it sits right here and I'll just draw some marks on the uh, on the pyramid and cut them out on the bandsaw. Okay, so here's the setup. This is the Tattoo Machine power supply, and it's attached to the Tattoo Machine, which I am sitting on a piece of wood so it doesn't bounce around the metal table. Um, the Pyramid uh, Arduino switch runs off a standard USB port, uh, which I have plugged into a USB wall adapter right there. And here it goes. Okay, so those of you who have made it this far would never forgive me unless I showed you the actual circuit and the code for the Arduino. It's really simple. 
And uh, here, I'll, I'll walk you through it now. Okay, so what we're looking at is the Arduino main board. The thing on the right is my motion sensor. It gets its power from the Arduino main board through the black and white wires, and then its output goes into pin 2 on the Arduino. Now over here, this uh, LED at the top left, the red thing, uh, instead of that LED, what I have is the uh, driver transistor, which is basically just a switch. It connects to the very same two pins on it. And what the code does basically is tell the software to look at pin 2 where the yellow line from the motion sensor is going in, and if it sees a signal, toggle the LED on or off. And since I have a switch in place of the LED, it flips the switch. It's uh, really straightforward. In fact, I will put the entire code below in the description. So that's it for this time, and I really wish I knew a way to present this Arduino stuff better. Um, I'm, I'm having a little trouble figuring out how to translate it to video. Anyway, I'll leave links to resources down below, and uh, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.